Good afternoon, Jim Purnell, Treasure Coast Bullying Group. I want to spend a few minutes and talk about the coming announcement at the BRIC Trade Summit in Durban, South Africa next week. August 22nd, which is Tuesday, the BRIC Trade Alliance is holding a trade conference, if you will. Um, Putin will not be there for obvious reasons because, well, let's just say it's not a good idea to travel. Um, that being said, there's a lot of speculation on the internet as to what announcement the BRICS are going to make. Now again, BRICS, what are we talking about? That's the acronym for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Just those five countries in the moniker of BRICS represent roughly 42% of global population, which equals consumers, and 31% of current global exports. We're not talking a small group of people here or an insignificant volume of cross-border trade. We're talking roughly one-third of global trade on a daily basis is representative of these five countries. And it's not just those five countries. Now, those are the five that are in the BRICS moniker, but there are a couple hundred other countries on the planet and my last research that I did suggested that roughly 46% of the countries of the world, which let's say is roughly 50 countries, have applied to and or joined the BRIC Trade Alliance already. Now, there's a lot of speculation on the internet as to whether the BRICs are going to announce a gold-backed Russian cryptocurrency to challenge the dollar. I don't think that's the case. I really don't. There's a lot of talk about, oh, are they going to use gold to destroy the dollar? There's a little bit more merit to that argument. But if you look at the details of what they're doing and how it's being reported that they're doing it, I'm quite impressed with the strategy they're employing here. Now, if President Putin of Russia came out and directly held a press conference and directly attacked the U.S. dollar and said it's trash, it's garbage, our currency's better, we're backing it with gold, and everybody ran to the gold-backed currency, leaving the dollar unpopular, let's say, and an unpopular dollar shrinks in demand, and therefore purchasing power, and therefore value, and the dominoes begin to fall. If Russia directly attacked the dollar and invited the world to pursue the Russian currency as a better option, the U.S. could point the finger at Russia and say, the economic disaster is Putin's fault. I don't think Putin is interested in being blamed for anything more than what he's currently being blamed for, which is pretty much everything. Anything bad in the world is Putin's fault, including our last president, according to half the country. So, my point here is, I believe what you're going to see is the mention of either a ready-to-rock-and-roll gold-backed token and or the announcement of a soon-to-be-released gold-backed token. This is a brilliant move on their part because it's an indirect attack against the dollar. It's not a full frontal attack. It's simply saying, hey, we're not trying to steal the world away from the dollar and the system that is. We're just offering to our neighbors that if you're interested in trading with us and there's a difference in the value of items we're trading, we're willing to make that difference up by exchanging a token with gold attached to it. Now to put that in context, the way trade traditionally works is very, very different. So let's say I'm a country and I'm exporting to your country. I'm exporting a million dollars in oil, let's say. And your country is exporting three quarters of a million dollars in corn, let's say. So there's a quarter million dollar differential in the value of the items we're exchanging. For the last half century, the way this has been settled is your country, the deficient country in the transaction, would either wire a quarter of a million dollars in U.S. dollars to me, and then the pressure is on me to turn around and reinvest those dollars into something I need before they lose purchasing power, thanks to inflation. Or B, you could transfer custody of a quarter million dollars in U.S. treasuries, which are dollar equivalents to me, and then my purchasing power is secured by being locked into a government debt vehicle. However, those U.S. treasuries can be used in lieu of dollars. They're money in the global banking system. 
What this new opportunity brings to the table is a third option. And the third option is that your country, the deficient one in the transaction, could assign a token to my country and credit a quarter of a million dollars in gold to that token. Now, there's no pressure on my country receiving this gold token. There's no pressure on my country to hurry up and recommit those funds to another transaction so that we don't lose purchasing power. If anything, it's conceivable that the purchasing power of the gold backing the token could in fact rise as the dollar weakens and gold prices rise. Now, I'd like to think there'll be some fixed rate assigned to it. One way or another, we'll have to see how it's structured once it's presented to the world. But the idea of this is simple and brilliant at the same time. It's also time tested. For thousands of years of human existence on this planet, in capitalistic commerce, gold and silver bullion have been trusted mediums of exchange. They've been steady, they've been consistent, and they've been of value for a long time. So the idea of offering up a way to settle trade with a stable value financial item such as gold and or silver, it's a very simple, stabilizing, logical solution. What is also logical is that one could envision that if central banks of the world and nations are going to move forward, even if partially using physical gold bullion as a way to settle cross-border trade, then we could logically deduce that demand for gold in physical form of countries and central banks, possibly hedge funds and financial institutions, would obviously increase. If this is a third option to settle cross-border trade, and it's an option that hasn't been on the table for a half century, one could easily deduce that there will be an increase in demand for buying gold. And an increase in demand for anything drives the value of that item higher. So does it make sense to preemptively and proactively get ahead of this? I would argue yes. Given the inflationary environment that we've been in for several years now, does it make sense to preemptively get into gold and silver bullion? I would argue yes. Given the instability of the world around us, does it make sense to proactively and preemptively move money into gold and silver? I would say yes. Given the natural disaster with the fires in Maui, the failure on the government to warn the people, the failure of the power companies to turn the power off in the power lines as 80 mile an hour winds were causing the power lines to fall to the ground and start fires. I would argue makes sense to put money in gold and silver bullion. The failure of the spigot when Maui natives went to turn on the water hose to try and wet their yard and their house to keep the fire from burning it down only to have no water there. All of this makes the argument, in my opinion, that we must protect ourselves. It's something to consider. If you like what we're talking about in these videos, click the link below, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in continuing this conversation, there's an option below to schedule a phone call with me. Let's have that conversation. These are all things that need to be talked about, and they're certainly things to consider.